The word chrismon is a combination of the words Christ and monogram. The word chrismon has been adopted to refer to special Christmas ornaments that proclaim our Lord Jesus Christ through the use of ancient Christian symbols that date back to the origin of the first century church. Some were used by Christ himself and his contemporaries to describe his nature and mission. Over the years, other symbols for the Savior have been developed by his followers. All chrismons are made in combinations of white and gold. White, the liturgical color for Christmas, refers to our Lord's innocence, purity, and perfection. It is also the color of joy. The use of gold suggests kingliness, wealth, majesty, and glory, and like the color white is derived from biblical usage. The tradition of the chrismon tree began with Lutheran pastor George Pass in Danville, Virginia in 1940, when he began crafting symbols about Jesus Christ out of leftover Christmas wrapping paper. He hung these symbols on his church's Christmas tree. Mrs. Frances Spencer, a member of the Ascension Lutheran Church in the same town, further developed certain symbols that were appropriate for a church tree. Since then, many church congregations have made chrismons for their church to use during the Advent season. In the late 70s, a group of church members of Drummond, which is now Suncrest United Methodist Church, decided they would make chrismons. According to Dora Fay, the Reverend Paul Smith's wife, the women made the chrismons in a group workshop. The first sets of chrismons were originally displayed in the sanctuary windows. The chrismons were a set representing all church seasons and were placed inside a styrofoam circle that was wrapped in a ribbon of liturgical colors. The group participated in a chrismon tree competition with other churches in the Morgantown area. These chrismons were stitched in needlepoint and mounted in small frames. The chrismons were attached to gold streamers that flowed down from a large gold bow attached to the top of a small Christmas tree. After that, the group decided that they would make Reverend Smith velvet stoles with chrismons for each liturgical season. Debbie Carline said that it took over a year to make the different sets of chrismons because the work was very tedious and many times the chrismon would have to be taken apart and started over. Debbie said the group was excited and enjoyed making the chrismons with people they enjoyed being with but there were times that the group worked on the creations at home. Chrismon creator Carol Hall said that a lot of work went into creating each chrismon, but she enjoyed making them because when she was working on them, she felt closer to God. Every part of a chrismon, even its decoration, has something specific to say about our Lord and God. Some symbols have multiple meanings, which have never changed and we offer these interpretations to help viewers identify various elements in the chrismons and to share the intended message. The Alpha and Omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet and stand for Christ who said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Here these symbols of Christ's divinity are incorporated with crosses, fusilli, which is a variation of the Latin cross. In Christian symbolism, the eight-pointed star refers to regeneration through holy baptism. The scallop shell is a symbol for Christian baptism or the baptism of Jesus. It is also a symbol for pilgrimage and the spread of the gospel to the world. The three pearls represent the baptism in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The descending dove represents the presence of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost and the baptism of Jesus. Early Christians used the fish widely as an easily made and recognized secret sign. During the times of persecution of the church, 
Christians could find each other by using this simple password. To the outsider, the fish was a mere decoration. To the Christian, it was an affirmation of faith in the Christ. Most sources say that the incorporation of the letters came later and is the letters of the Greek word for fish, ichthus, formed an acrostic on the Greek phrase, Jesus Christ, God's Son, Savior. I, Yota, X, she, O, Theta, Y, Upsilon, C, Sigma. The flames surrounding the outside edges of the cross filament signify the fiery zeal of someone filled with the Spirit of God. The eye of God symbolizes the glory and majesty of the Father and His omnipotent love, loving care, and watchful judgment. This pre-Columbian art form reveals a cross in its weave. The she, symbol of Christ, is combined with the cross and the butterfly and represents Christ's ascension into heaven. The life of Christ is also associated with the three stages of metamorphosis of the butterfly, birth, death, and resurrection. The cross of Constantine is made with the two letters in the Greek alphabet, she and hro. The X, C-H, is turned to form a cross. The P, R, is the letter with the X, C-H, that stands for the Christ, the conquering king. Constantine saw the sign of the cross in the sky and became a Christian. He made it a law that everyone had to be a Christian. Here, double wedding rings, a modern marriage symbol, are attached below the arms of the cross, suggesting Jesus' blessing on the union. The apostle, St. Andrew, was crucified on an X-shaped cross because he wasn't deemed worthy of dying on the traditional cross of the crucifixion. The Yoda, I, is the first letter of our Lord's given name, Jesus, in Greek. This name means the promised one and is combined with she, the first letter of his Greek title, Christ. This chrismon is an interwoven abbreviation of his given name and his title. The ancient Trinity symbol is for the triune God and represents the three persons of the Trinity with separate and distinct figures. The sign for the Father God is a right triangle on its longest leg. God, the Son Redeemer, is symbolized by the cross by which he brought our salvation. The top figure is a reminder of wings, denoting the spirit whose presence at Jesus' baptism was like that of a dove. The anchor cross is the cross of hope. It rises from the crescent moon, which is the symbol of our Lord's mother. The epiphany star was the first manifestation of the Christ child to the Gentiles. The star led the three wise men to the nativity. The Christmas rose symbolizes the nativity of our Lord. The crown of thorns represents our Savior's crown of suffering. The fish is the Christian affirmation of faith and the intertwining serpents is the symbol for healing and wisdom. The original meaning of the Celtic cross, so popular today, is lost in antiquity. While the Celts probably originated this design, there is no certainty about the meaning which they may have intended for the circle. Some believe it to be a symbol for eternity. Elaborate carvings adorn many ancient Celtic crosses, and this one is embellished with the serpent, while others may have medallions, basket weaves, or vines. The combination of a triangle and the trefoil, a stylized shamrock used by St. Patrick to illustrate the Trinity, both are symbols of the Trinity, three persons united in one. Another variation of the Trinity is the triune, which has a combination of three different elements. In the center is the shamrock. It is said that an Irish priest 
Patrick first used the shamrock to attempt to explain the inexplicable nature of one God in three persons, or Holy Trinity. The equilateral triangle has three separate and distinct sides. It has been used for centuries to suggest the one God who has presented himself to man in three different ways. The endless circle defines the eternal nature of God, who was before time and who will be when time is no more. The Latin cross is the most common form of the cross, and it is on this form that our Lord was crucified. This cross is a reminder of Jesus' suffering, which provided the gift of eternal life. The resurrection cross depicts the rising sun behind the cross, which symbolizes the new day, which promises the forgiveness of our sins. The most common used monogram is the Yota, Eta, Sigma, IHS, which is the first three letters of Jesus in Greek. Here the letters are attached to a Greek cross suggesting the sacrifice that our Savior made for our salvation. The monogram cross depicts how monograms can be hidden in a design. Among the letter combinations that are readily discernible are XP, XPC, and IC, and XC for Jesus the Christ. The seven-tongued flame represents the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost when tongues as of fire rested upon the followers of Christ and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. In Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit are listed as wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, piety, and the fear of the Lord. In Revelations chapter 5 verse 12, the gifts consist of power, wealth, wisdom, might, honor, glory, and blessing. The crown represents the kingship of our Lord, his victory over sin and death, and his place of honor at the right hand of God the Father. The bell reminds Christians that they should be encouraged when the bells are heard and move toward rededication and recommitment to the faith. The chrismons that still exist are over 40 years old and are lovingly hung on the sanctuary Christmas tree every Advent season. Chrismons are a continual reminder that our Lord is the center of our Christmas season.